Ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis is a systemic rheumatic disorder, characterized by inflammation of the axial skeleton and large peripheral joints. It is one of the seronegative inflammatory arthropathy, progressing slowly to bony ankylosis. Ossification takes place in the spinal ligaments, and finally there is complete rigidity of the whole spinal column. Its etiology is unknown, genetic factors may play a role. Its incidence is more in men than women, with a ratio of 7.5 to 1. The disease starts in the second and third decades, in people of age 15 to 30 years. Pathological changes follow a constant sequence. First inflammation of the sacroiliac joints. Then formation of granulation tissues. Erosion of articular cartilage occurs. With the passage of time, ossification of the fibrous tissue occurs. That leads to widening of joint spaces. And bony ankylosis of the spine results. Articular cartilage, synovium and ligaments of vertebral joints may be affected. Stages of the disease Acute stage It involves sacroiliac fusion, variable stiffness of the lumbar spine. There is no restriction of normal life. Second is remission and relapse stage. Each relapse often is separated by several layers, leaving a little or more stiffness in more joints. Third is late stage. Few remissions ending with fusion of the spine leads to the classical bamboo spine. Clinical features of ankylosing spondylitis Low back pain, which is worse at night, in morning or after inactivity, and may be persistent. Limited spinal range of motion and early morning stiffness. After inactivity stiffness in the spine and other affected joints. Limited expansion of the chest. Swelling of joints including hips, shoulders, knees, and ankles. Chronic stooping or forward bending. Severe kyphosis may occur due to the effect of gravity. General feeling of malaise and loss of appetite. Fatigue, low-grade fever, eye inflammation may occur. Radiological findings. Early in the disease, there is haziness of both sacroiliac joints and the outline is no longer clearly identified. Later, the sacroiliac joints are completely obliterated. Vertical calcification of the longitudinal ligaments gives rise to typical bamboo spine appearance. New bone formation at the junction of the femoral head. Prognosis of ankylosing spondylitis. Although there was functional impairment, most patients continued to be fully independent. Symptoms may be worsen, go into remission, or stop at any stage. Treatments of ankylosing spondylitis. Number 1 Drugs. Salicylates and endomethacin may help to control pain. Rest. Bed rest may be indicated during the acute painful stage of the disease. Use firm mattress or bed board with low or no pillow to avoid kyphosis. In advanced cases surgery may required. In cases that have severe kyphosis, spinal osteotomy in lumbar spine may be indicated. When both hips are ankylosed total hip replacement may be done. The next option is radiation therapy. It is effective to the spine, but it has the risk of leukemia. Physical therapy management of ankylosing spondylitis. Physical therapy aims include to assess the patient, to relieve pain, to reduce stiffness, mobilize specific joints, and restore movement. To maintain general mobility and posture. To prevent deformity. To maintain and improve physical endurance. 
and to advise or counsel the patient and attendants. Assessment of ankylosing spondylitis. Posture assessment. Posture deviation occurs mainly in anteroposterior direction. In ankylosing spondylitis, there is loss of lumbar curve, increased kyphosis, loss of cervical curve, and protrusion of jaw. Methods used to assess posture, spondylometer, or photography. Spondylometer is used for measurement. It consists of an upright wooden post mounted at right angles to a wooden platform forming the base. The patient steps off the platform and a spinal profile is apparent and is recorded by plotting on graph paper. These measurements should be recorded at 6 month intervals. Photography, photographic records of posture are reported at 2 year intervals. Use lateral view and lateral view with trunk flexion and fingertip to toe position. Next assess the spinal movements. Record the spinal flexion, extension and lateral flexion. Limitation of lateral flexion is one of the earliest diagnostic signs of the disease. Assessment of kyphosis. It is assessed by wall test. The patient stands with his back to a wall. Normally heels, buttocks, scapulae and occiput can touch the wall simultaneously. In ankylosing spondylitis, there is limitation of extension. Measure the distance between the wall and tragus of the ear. Normal values are less than 14 cm. Assessment of pulmonary function. Spirometer can be used to assess lung function. Measure chest expansion by using the tape. Physiotherapy treatment options include modalities. Thought packs can be used for pain relief, muscle spasm and stiffness. Thought baths and warm showers are used for relaxation. Cryotherapy is used for swelling management. Transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation can be used for pain relief. Therapeutic exercises for ankylosing spondylitis. Exercise is an integral part of any treatment program for ankylosing spondylitis. Patients must be encouraged to exercise their body and keep moving. Because once joints fuse, physical treatment will not restore mobility. The exercise program is designed to improve or maintain mobility rather than strength because muscle weakness is not a significant feature of this disease. Exercises planned for ankylosing spondylitis patient should be simple, limited in number, enough but not too much, performed daily by the patient himself, never to the point of pain or fatigue and performed in midday or evening to be comfortable. Types of exercises that can include in management planner, mobilizations, Maitland mobilization techniques and hyperextension mobilization exercises have particular value. Breathing exercises, deep breathing exercises to improve ventilation and to decrease chest deformity. Include exercises connected with breathing, for example, a combination of active movement of the trunk or extremities, with deep breathing exercises. Stretching and flexibility exercises. They are used for all tight muscles such as pectoralis and trunk muscles. Strengthening exercises for spinal extensors. However, using of light weights is encouraged, use of heavy weights are contraindicated. 
Following tips should keep in mind. Always sleep flat, upon his back on a firm mattress, but not hard. Avoid using a pillow, if possible. Use of a small folded towel is suitable to prevent flexion deformity of the spine. Use back support if driving any distance in a car. Daily prone lying is the best exercise for maintaining good erect posture. Avoid excess calories and obesity to lessen body weight and stress on joints. Hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon.